Let's do it. Fix your hair, Tony. We can't have any unnecessary eyebrows out of place. Perfect. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, ringers, Danielle here, guys. I've got I've got Tony here with me. Wave, Tony. Hi. There we go, What's guys. Up? Guys, I'm cheating on Dan today. Um, so for our ringers watching on on video here, I'm in a new space today, guys. So Tony, you don't know this. I um normally record in my dining room because okay. I've always only had such a, a so long Ethernet cable. <laughs> Ethernet, that's the internet cable, right? Yeah. So I've only been able to go so far. And finally, I uh, invested in a 100-foot cable so that I could just do this in my office like a real human being. So guys, <laughs> welcome to my office. I like my office because my office walls are black until here and then white the rest of the way up. And when I uh, when I was doing this, uh, my fiance Mike was like, I don't know if this is going to be good, like a black half black office and I was like no no I think it's going to be good and I love it it's my most favorite room in the entire house so I kind of like it because it like disguises like the little printer I see like all of your like yeah. cluttery stuff has a nice I like uh. it I shouldn't say <laughs> oh, cl it's not clutter yeah. mm, but your it's, stuff. no that's mean but it's fine to say yeah, that yeah. to a Virgo that's a really mean <laughs> thing to say right there I don't is like Virgo clutter. is Virgo September yeah you're okay. a Virgo too I, right yeah 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 yeah, I, you're, I didn't know that till just now, but yeah. You're close to me. Your birthday, I'm September 7th. Second for me, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. Okay. We have, um, you're a different type of Virgo than I'm, I'm type of Virgo. I'm the pain in the butt kind of Virgo. Um, okay. The one that is incredibly particular on how they like their bathroom towels folded. Oh, okay. I'm the yeah. type of Virgo that said... I need to push all the things that could possibly possibly be in the background just to the side so that so that it looks clean. But then right down there is a hot mess, all the stuff right? Going. Yeah, <laughs> all yeah. The things, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. I'm with you. See, that's yeah, that is is a Virgo right there. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. I've got my little um my little Harry Potter shrine up here. <laughs> With all my Harry Potter things, uh, I, I don't collect much of anything, okay. um, but by nature, I love Harry Potter. It's just kind of who I am. Uh, so I, I tend to be gifted those things more often than not, which I love. Um, so that's my little space nice. for my little like my little my little trinkets and stuff. So I like it up there. <clears throat> Awesome. But yeah, so we're um, we're talking about photography today, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I feel like we should probably just jump right on into the podcast. Let me get my, Let's I got do my it. water. Ugh. What kind of mug do we have today? I have a Starbucks mug, guys. Are you drinking anything, Tony? What are you drinking? Uh, I just finished my my little dirty chai here. Oh, That's my... dirty chai. Yeah, I make one every morning. It's. I've decided that if I ever find out that espresso <laughs> chai. Or bananas cause cancer, then it was nice knowing you. <laughs> 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 those are your like go tos. Yeah, yeah. I um I did one of those food allergy tests. I hate bananas, uh, mm. and I did one of those food allergy things, and I'm like highly sensitive to bananas. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, I don't have to eat these stupid things anymore. Because I would try to get them in my system to be like, well, they're good for me. I should eat this. Yeah. Nay. Nay, I don't have to do that anymore. I have a really good excuse. A test I took yeah. online told me I don't have to eat bananas. <laughs> when <laughs> Amy goes it. to the store, like the general rule is if she's go like if one of us is at the store, just buy more bananas because they will not like just yeah. we just need the bananas. Yeah. That makes sense. Exactly. Or like that with almond milk, because I go through almond milk really fast. Same. So yeah. yeah. Same. It's just one of those things. If you're going, get the almond milk. <clears throat> All right, so let's dive into our podcast, guys. Ringers, I'm so excited for this one. Um, it's going to be good. All right, okay, get my little sniffies in. Tony, you ready to go? Let's do it. All right. I always do, because um, Dan's not here, he always does in five, four, <laughs> three. <laughs> Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Put a Ring on It podcast. I am having 
Oh, so many emotions for today's episode because I have another photographer here. Um, I know. Shh. So Dan's away, but I promise that I not only got Dan's blessing to bring on another photographer, but it was highly encouraged, especially to bring on this photographer in general. But I'm having, um, I feel like I'm cheating on Dan here. <laughs> um, but we both so admire and respect um, Tony Hoffer, who we have as my beautiful guest host today. So I know Tony, um, gosh, I think the first wedding we ever worked together was in 2014. Tony, is you're that the right? Yeah, you're it the. You're it was the July nineteenth, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Actually, I can tell you that with complete certainty. Um, but Tony <laughs> way to, is. Way to pretend you didn't know. I actually don't even have it written down either. Uh, but yeah, that's that is the Virgo in me coming right out. Yeah. But Tony is the photographer and the owner of Hoffer Photography, and he's also kind of based out of the Philly-ish area, uh, right? Tony, do you kind of loop yourself into Philly like we do, even though we're definitely not in Philadelphia? Yeah, the further away we get, the. M the closer we say we live to Philadelphia, if that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> if, we're, if we're in California, then we just live in Philadelphia. Right, but, right, yeah. You know, yeah. To make it easy for things, that totally yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, so, Tony, tell us outside of that, tell us a little bit about you and the world of Hoffer. Sure, sure. So, um, hi, um, <laughs> and I'm glad you I'm glad you got a guest host that was at least as tall as Dan, um, so true. that helps. You're yeah. both very um, tall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Amy and I, Amy is my wife, um, we, we started our business about 12 years ago and um, shoot a lot of weddings, we've been shooting at weddings ever since we started um, and we have a little small team, so there's there's five of us on our on our little team and um, yeah, like you said, we, we work out of Philly, but um, Amy and I at least, we travel a lot and shoot kind of all over the place, so um, yeah, so we, we kind of go up and down the East Coast and around the world sometimes and uh, we love what we do, love shooting weddings, have a lot of fun, and um, we really we really kind of fell into a, a life that we um, really enjoy and love. So um, so that's us, and then we, we have a few other people that, that work for us and shoot for us as well that we love them too. We just feel, we feel like something must have happened bad to us in a previous life because we got really lucky in this one, so... You had some good yeah. karma coming your way. Yeah, yeah, something. that's awesome. You do, you do have a great team of people for sure, and I will share um, you guys on the show notes, and we'll talk about it at the end of this episode how you can kind of um, follow and learn more about Tony and Hoffer and all of that. Um, but I'm telling you right now, you are going to want to follow his Instagram because their um, their team and everybody that comes together. Because I know it's not just you, Tony. You can't mm -hmm. take all the credit for your social media. I, I never would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but they're just, the stuff they post is amazing and it's always pretty much hilarious. Um, and it's just like a feel good thing that comes up in your feed um, all the time when I see you guys. So, but you don't do, I, you do more than just weddings too, right? Yeah. So we, um, we kind of have grown a little bit in um, doing a lot of commercial work. So that's, that's more me. Excuse me. That's more me. So Amy and I shoot weddings together and basically our team all works on weddings. And then when it comes to commercial work, um, I shoot all of that. And then Lindsay, our studio manager, helps me with with that and doing the back end of that. So um, so that's been a cool it's been a it's been a little growing part of our of our company and something that I can use to kind of get some other creative outlets going. But um, weddings has pretty much always been the the bulk of what we do and um as much as that grows we're gonna we're gonna keep doing weddings as, as long as we can so that's awesome i love yeah. um i love obviously the weddings that we get to work together it's always such a good time mm -hmm. whether it's you and amy or your team um i feel like we um as a team of wedding professionals behind the scenes we all work i think at least we all work really well together and you guys show up ready to do what you're gonna do i show up ready to do what i gotta do if there needs to be changes we're all really flexible and get that it's like a living breathing day so from a planner's perspective i always enjoy that so much and I feel like we get to work with some amazing wonderful people uh like you at I don't know what I did in a past life but the people that I get to work with now are just ugh, good people and fun and I'm just so excited um for what we get to do every day but with that note how would you kind of describe the couples that you click best with when you are doing weddings yeah so we found this kind of like interesting niche I would say with with our business where um, 
as we've like grown and like got better and like just to be frank about it like you start charging more and being you know like figuring out your place in the world we found this interesting niche where it's like we don't do a lot of weddings where it's like these people have this huge budget and so we are a photographer that they hire and just kind of show up and do our job Mo almost every couple that we work with um sort of appreciates creativity i would say and we really seem to connect with on a more personal level and so um we get a lot of couples that like we go to the wedding and we feel like we know each other and we're friends and usually someone at the wedding is like oh how do you guys how do you guys know each other where did you meet like something like that where it's more than just like the we got hired thing and so so that's our goal those are the people we love to work with because they not only like value what we do but we value them as people and want to kind of serve that as we're shooting and so um you know over the years the most memorable people that we've shot for aren't the people that had the most money or anything like that but they're the people that poured themselves into what we shot for them and we could find something that was uniquely them um which is you know that's kind of the goal from our end of things I love yeah. that. <clears throat> I'm I I don't know if I'm similar to you in in some ways, but I um I'm not the most cheap um planner there is, but I'm also not yeah. the most expensive out there there is either. Um but I have found that the couples that I work best with and the ones that we have the best working relationship are the ones that I know are are in, investing in what I do and they're not just throwing money at me like they're they're working hard for for every penny that they earn and for what they're putting into this wedding and I know that they appreciate and trust what it is I'm doing and I always love when there's that um that level of mutual respect and trust mm -hmm. between you and the couple so um, I think that's really awesome. I think a great way to really describe it. Um, now, for our couples listening, uh, for our amazing ringers, do you have any advice for them to know whether the photographer they're talking to or working with is the right fit for them? Like, have you found any ways to kind of navigate that? Sure. Yeah, I would say. OK, so if you're looking at if you're looking at photographers and kind of going through, there's a lot of us out there. So, you know, as you're going through, like, there are photographers that shoot in very specific ways. And if that's you, like if you look at their stuff and you're like, not only do I like the way these photos look, but I could see myself like making that expression or like having that, you know, look at the particulars of something like the way people are holding each other and things like that. Because to be honest, there's some photographers who shoot in a very specific style and it's great, but it's specific. And so if that's the case, and then, you know, you might like the way it looks, but when you think about yourself and think, well, I don't like how I look with a serious face or like we're really goofy together. And so maybe, you know, maybe even though you like the way it looks, that may not represent you. And so that's what I would say first is try to find someone that represents who you are, whether that's you're really goofy and spontaneous or you're very like serious and you're fine standing and posing for 10 minutes at a time in one pos specific position because you guys are and and like that kind of stuff i don't think people think about it. i think a lot of times people look at the photos and see the result and they don't think about what goes into the making of it which is fine it's not their job um but i find like that's sort of the most important thing that as we hear from couples that have you know, been in weddings with other photographers or things like that. That's the thing that we see the disconnect the most is like when the photographer has one specific vision and the couple expects something different and they can't kind of come together to make something that works for both. And so I know like for us, that's that's our biggest goal is like infusing the people we're shooting into the work we do and working differently for every couple. Um, that's, you know, like the more flexible and the more sort of I don't know. I don't know what the word is. It's like Fluid? a, it's like a, yeah, it's like a lizard or something that changes colors depending on where it is. I think those <laughs> you know, are like, called chameleons. That's the word. Yep. Um, <laughs> but like for us, that's kind of our goal is like, we, we have our style, we have the way we shoot, but we want to change that depending on who we shoot for and the way we do it. Um, and so, you know, some, some photographers don't want to do that. Some are, some have their style and stick with it. Um, others do. And I, I would say just as you're looking, think about not only the way the photos look, but 
the people in them and if that feels like you and that represents you that's that's kind of the biggest advice i would give that's such a great point too i never really thought about it from that perspective but that's really true because i can look through a magazine right of of a like let's say it's a wedding magazine with all kinds of pretty pictures and different things and you can see a bunch of different styles and there's a whole gamut in there um and i can still appreciate a photo for what it is and go oh that's a really pretty photo but there are some like i am not a serious person a, a newsflash guys <laughs> i know y'all are shocked to hear that but like i'm not serious and i have a hard time just like not s smiling you know for for different things so for me to look at like a more serious like vogue photo right i can yeah. appreciate it that that's a really cool photo but there's no way in the hell that i would ever be in that photo and look any bit uh -huh. natural i mean Obviously, I would be in a Vogue magazine. I mean, <laughs> duh. <laughs> but, well, who would want you? Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, God, the, the requests I get are just insane. <laughs> but but really, though, that's a really great point is I know who I am as a person. Well, I guess I should say I'm learning who I am as a person. I think as we kind of go through our life, that's like part of our part of our job is to just kind of figure that out in general. Yeah. So to put yourself in that position uh, of, of, of all that makes a lot of sense. And I think... You're looking at your, gosh, you said 12 years you've been doing this. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, to look at through all the different things, you have, I would say, a specific style that sticks out to me. But I also know that you have so many different couples that you've worked with where there are some photos that are super fun and crazy and other photos that are incredibly artistic and other photos that are just like just the, the emotion is pouring out of it, right? And it's it's all those little things that kind of come together to make up who you guys are as photographers. But it's 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 interesting to hear that you pull that a lot from the couple itself because you don't just have one like this is how we shoot and it is how it is. Yeah, so I guess to give you, I can think of like two specific examples, but um, just the last the last two days. So we we actually we shot in Brooklyn excuse me, we shot in Brooklyn the last two days, um, two engagement sessions for two couples from Brooklyn and literally in the exact same area, which is a challenge for a photographer because you're going to the same place twice in a row. Um, the first day, though, was for two people. They were a little on the younger side. When I say younger, I mean like mid-20s. Um, they, they travel a lot. Um, they're from different parts, ended up in New York. And you could tell by the way they dress and what they do, which is travel. They're in the tech industry. The way we shot them was like as natural as possible. Like, let's keep things moving. Let's, they're very smiley. Let's just like keep our cameras to our faces and move quickly. Like we don't want them standing in place for too long because as soon as they do that, they start thinking about us when naturally they're very good and comfortable. The second day we shot for two people. They were um, of Russian background, which is interesting because if you've ever seen Russian wedding photography, it's very staged. Like it's it's a production. And I don't mean that in a good or a bad way. It's just like it's it's a production. Um, they didn't want that. But at the same time, that's the background they came from. They came to the shoot dressed in this. Um, she had this amazing dress on these six inch heels. She had her hair all done up, you know, like. And so it was it was going to be a very different shoot. And so for them, it was a lot more static, a lot more posing and a lot more about the specific look. And so that shoot, I don't want to say it was slower, but it was very different in the way that we approached who they were. If we handled those people the same way, we felt like we would have done a disservice to both. And so for us, that the shoots were very different, even though they were in the same place a day after each other. And that's kind of the goal. Um, I know, like you were saying with the Vogue thing, like we if we've we've done like workshops and stuff and we've seen photographers work and there's like every once in a while well, Amy and I will jump in and like they'll shoot photos of us and and I've had photographers who I like as being in front of the camera just like would whisper to Amy like this is not for us because you know if they're like trying to tell jokes and stuff like that, like I'm very cynical. I do not like, I do not flow with that at all. Um, but like, I, I want someone to just talk to me like a person, you know, and there's people that do it different ways. And so I think there's, there's certainly something for everyone, but there's a lot more that goes into it than the final photo that people see. Right.
And that's yeah. that's that's something we preach a lot about um, on past episodes. And I, I think, Ringers, if you've been with us for a while, you're probably even sick of hearing this. But it is so good to do your due diligence as you're looking to find your photographer to find that person who clicks with you. Like if you're a person who needs somebody being, uh, you know, telling those jokes behind the camera, then I mean, I, you can actually come right out and say that as you're interviewing them. But you're going to get that vibe with them as you talk with mm -hmm. them and as you as you do this, because there are so many. I think out of all the categories and the roles that are in the wedding world, I would have to say there's probably more photographers than probably anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, there are just so many options out there and can it be a lot to navigate. So like Tony said, start with the style and then figure out that personality and, and who you're going to click well with because mm -hmm. while you don't have to be the very best of friends with your photographer it does show when you and them are not getting along and you're not gelling on some level because mm. it, it just shows up in the photo guys i promise <laughs> uh if for some of you guys know my partner mike um takes photos very rarely and back in the day he would take my headshots every now and then which I still appreciated. But if I was in a bad mood uh, and as a girl, like, you know, like when you're trying to do your hair, you're doing your makeup and the hair's not working and you got to get these headshots done and do all the things. And like, it would always show when he would have to take my photo and I was definitely <laughs> giving him attitude and like irritability, not his fault at all. He was doing his best and I was just not giving him <laughs> anything to work with. It would always show. I would always hate those headshots way more than the ones when I was like, I love you. This is great. Having so much fun. <laughs> Again, not his fault but <clears throat> okay so I actually want to switch gears a little bit here um, and talk about something with you that I think is actually really interesting and that is the idea of how much wedding photography has really changed so my sister um, my amazing wonderful older sister much older sister got married back in 1999 and I was 13 at the time um, and talk about uh, irritability. Holy crap, was I a hormonal and pain in the butt little teenager at that point. But when I think back to her wedding, um, which is almost, you know, it is 20 years ago now at this point, it is, it was nothing like the weddings that we see today. And I think with that, I mean, the photography was completely different. Like she was getting posed in my mother's living room with like, the it was like that newspaper shot right the one where like you knew it was going to end up getting like faded out around her <laughs> you know where it was just going to be her looking yeah. all like gentle and innocent looking down at her bouquet and i mean there's photos like that now that are really beautiful but it was just like a different vibe right um and that was like they didn't really do anything creative or interesting or anything like that which is fine like that's not not good bad or otherwise it was just totally different and i think mm. for our um generations of people that are getting married now um, it's way different than it ever was and I think what I'm finding is when I'm working with the couples who um, have their parents really involved in the planning process there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect of what photography in 2019 and 2020 as we head into it looks like today and I think it makes okay. it difficult for couples to kind of explain to previous generations like their parents like why photography no longer costs the very little amount that it ever used to do and why it's a little bit more of an investment now, but also what comes with that different level of investment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you've stumbled into an area that I've thought a lot about. So I apologize if I talk for a while. <laughs> no, no talk. That's it's a podcast. So you're good for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, I mean, just to kind of backtrack to, I think, the reason why that happened. And a lot of that is just a, is just the nature of film. So you think about an iPhone or something like that now, there's no consequence for taking a bad photo. There's almost no chance you're going to lose a photo. But think about that 20 years ago with film. You could, at any point, destroy a roll of film. Um, you had no idea what the photo looked like until, you know, days or weeks later. And so for a lot of photographers, being safe was the only way to guarantee good results because you were doing the same things over and over again that systematically you knew would work because, you know, even I know a lot of people out there aren't photographers, but like the way a photo comes out on an iPhone is just it's automatic mode. You just push the button and it looks you know, with a, with a SLR or a big camera, you can adjust it. You can make it as light as you want, as dark as you want, whatever. You're manually making those adjustments. And so um, because of that, you could totally screw it up. And so 
back in the day, if you're shooting film, you want to make things as, you know, you want to not screw up, especially with the wedding. <laughs> and so, so that's why it was so staged and so similar. Um, at the same time, there were people that were pushing the boundaries back then, but they were a lot fewer and, and further between. Um, so it, it was, I think it was a little more of a commodity then. And now because of digital and because of being able to see what you produce and whatever, we can take more chances. We can kind of do whatever we want. And if it doesn't work, do something else. Um, and so there's a lot less risk now than there used to be. And therefore there's a lot more room for different types of work, different types of artists. And I think that's kind of where, where it stems from. And it's, it's hard to explain that to parents, that's for sure. <laughs> but I think, I think that's where, that's where it began, you know? For sure. I think yeah. it's interesting. I grew up in my house. My mom always had anywhere we went, the fanny pack with that big old camera full of film yeah. ready to go that she would just take a million photos. Um, and those photos would get printed and would live under the bed, you know, in a container <laughs> for the end of yeah. time. Like they're all just probably still there. Um, but it's different now. It's, it's, it's a completely different world. Um, and I think for good, bad or otherwise, things are just different and changing. And um, it can be tough to kind of make sure that your parents are on the same level and understanding why this is a little bit different than it was perhaps when they got married, you know, because yeah. it's just what it is. Yeah. And we've, we found that for the most part, the good thing about that is that back in the day when this was happening, when the parents generation was getting married, they would probably walk away with like 50 photos. It was like family photos, a shot of a bride in front of a mirror, stuff like that. Obviously, our couples are getting way more photos than that now. So the good thing about that is almost any photographer will still take a lot of those things. And so if the parents' expectations are that, it's very easy to just ask a photographer you're talking to, hey, can I see a full wedding? And in that full wedding, they will probably have all of those photos. And then most of the rest of the time will be dedicated to whatever the couple style is or the photographer style is. So, you know, other than a few little things like going around and taking a shot of every table with their During all their dinner. food in front of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> other than like stuff like that, which isn't really done anymore. For the most part, a lot of those shots still exist and they might just be for the parents sake. But again, you know, we're shooting digitally, we can do it real quick and, and move on, you know, so. Yeah. Um, so I think most photographers, with a few exceptions, will still get that stuff. But it's a matter of sometimes of just communicating to your parents that like, hey, look, here's the stuff you want. And then let me have the rest of the time for the stuff I want. Yeah, because a photographer, I mean, what you do is by nature, it's as creative as it gets. So while you still take all of those photos, like I don't think there's probably any wedding you've done where you haven't taken family photos, right? Where it's, you know, the couple with their yeah. with their parents or their siblings or whatever it is to some degree. So, but it doesn't make sense for you to showcase that on your website because it's not that exciting. I mean, at least that's how I look at it is it's not really that exciting for anybody but the people that are in the photo. Those are the photos that you really hold dear later on down the road as you get older and as you kind of go through different chapters of life. So they are so important. But from a creative brain aspect, uh, the fun ones are the cool portraits. I mean, guys, I'm telling you, you need to go to Tony Hoffer's website, hofferphotography.com, <laughs> right? Is that the website? Hofferphotography.com? Yeah. I'm going to put all the stuff in the show notes so that you guys have links. But you will see exactly what I'm talking about. If you're driving, pull over right now and just look it up because you will then see the kind of stuff that, that we're talking about and that Tony and his team do really, really well. It, it's mind-blowing stuff for sure. Um, so Thank you. Yeah, you're he's <laughs> blushing <laughs> for our ringers watching on video. <clears throat> yes, there you go. Bat your eyes. There we go. So what, um, what would you say, like, what does wedding photography represent today or what purpose does it serve? as we were talking about this? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I think one of the, <laughs> one of the things that I kind of always go back to is that like, obviously our lives are documented more than they've ever been before. Um, but I think one of the things that over the past few years, as we've lived with these smartphones and social media and all this stuff for a decade or so, we, I think most people are starting to really appreciate sort of the off button a little bit. Um, and at least now, to me, 
great photography represents sort of the real life that we all wish we spent more time doing. And a wedding is probably the only time in your life where everyone that you care about and that cares about you will be together with you. And For so, a happy reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, and I know that I feel like I feel like weddings are sort of I feel like there's a little bit of a cultural trend to downplay how like great weddings are, which I can understand. I mean, Amy and I had a very small wedding ourselves and I loved it. Um, but I think there's I think people sort of miss out sometimes on that aspect of it. And I've grown to appreciate that the longer we've done this is that there is such a rare it's such a rare moment in life where all these people that care about you are in one place and that you can just have a great time and celebrate that. And for me, great photography represents that and represents the people. So like, I honestly, I don't really, this is going to sound bad, but like I could kind of, (laughs) I could kind of care less about all the other stuff about it. Like our, I view our job as, Let's represent the people we're shooting and the the day. And if people can look at these photos and say, hey, this looks like the day we had, then we've succeeded. And if people look at our photos and say, hey, this looks like the way someone wanted to make a portfolio for wedding photography, then we failed. Um, And so that's for us, that's kind of the goal. And that's what it represents for us. Yeah. I think it's hard. I um, So we're engaged, um, Mike and I, and we will be doing a very small wedding because for me, that's that's what I've always wanted. That's to me was the most romantic end goal. Um, like the city hall weddings I watch on, like the TV and the movies, those are the <laughs> ones I cry most on because I, I love those. I think they're fabulous. So for us, that works. I didn't realize you guys had a really small wedding too. How many people did you have at your wedding? So we got married in California and we had around like 30, 35 people, I think. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So they mean small in one way, like you're kind of a little bit larger even than a micro wedding would be classified as yeah. today. Yeah. But um, but that's interesting that you kind of look at it a little bit differently after the fact. Was that before you guys started doing wedding photography? Yeah, it was right around the same time. Yeah. yeah. Just why not? Yeah. Just start all the things all yeah, at once. Yeah, just do it all at once. Yeah. <laughs> and during a recession, if my math is right, right? Like just leading mm-hmm. into it. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's interesting. I think it's, I think it just comes down to always going back to like looking at what your options are and working through what feels best to you. But I think it's, it's fair to say that we have a lot of ringers that will just flat out say like, I'm not a personality that likes all of the attention, right? So the thought of having 200 people celebrating with them can be terrifying, Mm -hmm. You know, and that's probably even like um, trimming it down a little bit from what they actually feel. Um, But I guess it is really good to also go back, though, and look at the fact of what Tony said that, and we've said it before, it's not often in your life that all these people come together to celebrate you for a happy reason. Like there's, Mm -hmm. it's very few times in our life that that will happen um, if you're lucky. So it's, it's important to think of it from that aspect as well. You're not changing my mind, though. I'm still doing a small wedding. I don't care what you say. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's cool. We love small weddings. We get yeah. to shoot a few every year and it's, awesome. we love them. Yeah. That's awesome. But for me though, if I really think about it, there is only the people that I would be inviting to my very small wedding are the people that I want there and, and want throughout my life for as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I wouldn't add anybody else. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so speaking of uh, this, this idea of it being like uncomfortable, how about I think there's also this intimidation factor for people to have their picture taken, right? Like we're on, we're not all ready for America's next top model. Like where we're just like, we know how to find our light and we know our angles and all this. And I think, um, you have this desire as a couple, or at least I can imagine you do. Maybe this is just me being the overthinker that I am, (laughs) but I would imagine that many of us go into it thinking like, well, we just, we want to do our best and we want to make sure, like, we want to make the photographer feel like really good about what they're doing and excited to take our photo. Like we don't want them behind the camera being like, Oh, this is going to be brutal. You know what I mean? And we have this feeling like we want to look perfect and Oh, look at how happy we are and how in love we are. And sometimes for many of us, when we try to look happy or we try (laughs) to be like, no, I love you. I love you. 
it looks very unnatural and very uncomfortable. Yeah. So what advice do you have for us crazies over here <laughs> who can't figure out how to make Tyra Banks happy? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So a few things. Um, the first thing is what we've already talked about. Um, find someone that you connect with photography wise, because there is nothing will make you feel or nothing will make you look more awkward than if, you have an awkward relationship with the person that's, you know, trying to get you to feel comfortable, <laughs> basically, like it's, it doesn't work. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, for some people, not for everyone, but for some people, um, have a drink before you're, you know, shooting engagement photo and engagement photos are a great suggestion, by the way, yes. um, to, to start that process, even, you know, I think they're a great way to get photos of a time in your life that's not at a specific venue or something like this is like in a white ball gown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So like a great way to get photos that represent like who you are right now. Um, but aside from that, a great way to kind of get used to it. Um, and then I think the sorry, I lost my train of thought. Wait for it. <laughs> um, I think the sort of the bigger thing is don't try to this goes in my mind for a lot of wedding things but especially for photography don't try to visualize what it's going to look like before it happens because with weddings so much stuff changes like sometimes timelines don't work out sometimes someone has to feed their baby sometimes you know whatever and the same thing with photography we've had some couples over the years that wanted a beautiful sunset and then it's cloudy or it's rainy or worse. Um, and if you get stuck on how you think your photos should look before anything even happens, you're not only boxing yourself in, you're boxing your photographer in and you're setting yourself up to be disappointed. Like the, your number one goal should be to have a good time and that's it. And if you're having a good time that will come across in what we do, it will make our jobs easier. It will just allow things to come together. Our, when we, I'm, I'm using engagement photos a lot as an example because that's a good, that's a good like chunk of time where it's just like you and a photographer. And for us, like the first thing we tell people when we start an engagement session is the biggest goal here is for you to have fun. And so we might we might have a suggestion or tell you what to do, but like we don't care if you do it as long as you're having fun. Because like that, that's the biggest thing. And if you're having fun, you're going to look great regardless, because that represents who you are. Exactly. Our truest like smile and all that stuff always comes through when we're doing something that just genuinely makes us happy. Right. Yeah. Um, I think of as you're saying all this, I feel like I, I've, I've been a planner now for about 10 years. And there was definitely a chunk of time a few years ago. And depending on where you're at in the world, it's all regional and our trends kind of go through the world in different ways. But there was definitely a period of time where there was just certain photos. And I think it was definitely as Pinterest was really just making its like, <laughs> its announcement into the world. <clears throat> But there were certain photos that were just going around and round and round and round where it was yeah. the bride looking into the mirror with all of her bridesmaids in the mirror and the shot was of the mirror or it was the groomsmen all holding the bride up in the air or was the guy holding, you know, the groom holding his ring out and like all of the groomsmen acting like, <gasps> Yes, like is so excited and all this stuff. And it were all things that that photographer, uh, those photographers rather, that took those photos were creative and did their thing in that moment. But then what I saw happening was some couples were taking that photo to their photographer who did not take that mm -hmm. photo and saying, I want this, right? Right. And no matter what that photographer did to try and make that photo happen, it would never be the original photo because it wasn't those people. It wasn't that day. It wasn't that light. It wasn't that room. It wasn't that photographer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that anything of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So to ask that of that photographer from the jump, they were setting themselves up for, for a letdown because no matter what they did, it was never going to be that thing. And instead of allowing the photographer to kind of create their own unique amazing, special, fun, whatever it is moment that that couple was after, they were then tasked with trying to recreate something else. And it's hard. It's just, it's just not, it's just not possible. So mm -hmm. I, I like what you're saying with all of that. Um, do you still get couples sometimes bringing you other photos saying we want this? 
It's pretty rare, but yeah, I know, I know what you're, what you're saying. And I think, I think that's a great point. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just never going to be the same. And so I think, I think if someone has like a vibe that they like, like if they wanted to show us a photo and say like, Hey, like, I really, I really like how, how comfortable these people look or something like that's cool. But like, yeah, showing a picture of like, it's always, you know, the photos that you get, right. They're always in like the four seasons in Malibu and, you know, like, (laughs) it's like, it's like somebody who's like an actress and a model and all their friends are too. Right. And and all the friends are just that day. Yeah. And then like, you know, for us, like, if we show up and like someone's getting ready in their parents' house with like a 10 by 12 bedroom that they've lived in their whole lives and hasn't been remodeled since the early, you know, eighties or something, it's like, it's not gonna, it's not, it's no, right. sorry, <laughs> you can't. Right. Um, so I think, I think that's a great example, but that doesn't mean there's not opportunities there because they might have amazing light coming through the windows that day, or there might be like a cool, back porch area which might like suit to put put the dress on instead or you know like right there's there's certainly things so again yeah just being being open to that like having ideas is is great but if we're so stuck on someone else's vision that we can't just allow you know our day to take place then then it can sometimes be a problem yeah I think I need to step up on my soapbox here for a minute because I also feel that as y'all plan your wedding, please don't think about what you can maybe put on Pinterest and what is going to look good on the blogs or what's going to what's going to be something that some, you know, that style me pretty is going to want to pick up. Because if I don't want to say anybody's wrong, but if that's your goal for your wedding, I think it's a good time to step back and really look at your 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 priorities for the day. Because while it's fun to have your wedding published, guys, I'm telling you, it means absolute jack in the whole grand scheme of it all. And if you're, if part of the story of your day is you getting ready at your childhood home where your parents have not touched your room because they love you and they miss you and it's totally all still from the 80s, that's part of the story from your day and it is okay. It is not wrong if that's part of the, part of, part of what your day is, okay? Because it's not the wedding day is not sorry tony it's not about the photos it's about the two of you guys right photos and flowers and entertainment and all of those things and and the you know the the things that are happening they all help to make up the day and and support the day but ultimately that day is about you and your partner the people that are around you and how you're choosing to kind of go through and celebrate that and there is no right or wrong way as long as you're taking care of your guests you're coming at it from a place of just being happy and 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 doing what feels right to you then there is no wrong thing there's unrealistic things and unrealistic expectations but there is no wrong if it's what you really want and what makes sense for you and your guests so don't feel like oh well gosh if if we don't you know if we don't have all of these photos that I see on Pinterest and like my wedding's not as good guys that is the farthest thing from the truth ever that you could possibly think to yourself. So if you're having those thoughts, A, it's okay, but B, let it go. Let those thoughts go and just go back and recenter and focus yourself with your partner on what it is that makes you happy and what you want for the day for no other reason other than the two of you and your guests. So Yeah. Um I think that's a great po- I think that's a great point. Ditto. Boom. I will I will <laughs> I will agree with you, but I will I will give one like little pushback caveat. Yes, well. please do. Bring it okay. on. So the agreeing part is I will say, we tell everyone, like, you find something that's meaningful to you and we'll make we'll take care of the making it look good part. Like we sure we would love it if everything was at the four seasons in Malibu. Like that's cool. Like that looks good. But like the the main goal for you should be do things that are meaningful to you, and the main goal for us should be Let's make that look as best we can. Like, so I totally agree with you. The one thing I will say, and this has happened more over the last five years, is that for some people, especially younger people, the value is in that post. (laughs) And like, I think that's tough for, you know, people like me, I'm in my mid thirties. Like it's, it's tough to like realize that, that like for someone who's 24, they're a lot of the value of 
their life is in getting likes and posting things on Instagram that their friends see. And like, I don't want to be so judgmental as to say that that's wrong either, because for some people, like that's what they want out of their wedding photography. And while I think there are more long term and more real expectations than that, at the same time, we we want to respect that, too. And so so there are some people that we shoot that that's clearly a goal. And so, you know, if that is a goal, you can you can tell us. And, you know, that's that's cool, too. But um I, we have seen that change, especially over the past few years where like, you know, for 100%. some people, that's what they want. That is that is a good point. And I don't want to make anybody feel bad, I guess, for what is important to them. Um, I maybe just want to make sure that people don't feel like if that isn't important, don't feel like it needs to be important. You know what right. I mean? Like if you don't really care what you post on social media, um, and and don't feel like oh gosh well this is my wedding I guess I should care don't 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 change that about you now, um, but yep. no you you that's a super fair point Tony I don't disagree with you at all in that sense um, and that's a, that's a really great way to think about it too Danielle chill out oh no, my god no 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 you're good you're good I'm just thinking about we had we had someone like last summer who like I could care less about being published I put zero effort into that I, it's just not on my radar but this person was she her job was in PR and. That was oh, that great was point, she, for sure. Yeah, that was what she cared about with her wedding. Like, every time we talked to her, it was, this place will publish if we do this. This pl-, You know, and that was that was literally her biggest concern with her wedding was getting published in as many places as possible. And right. so for us, the job was to to work with that, you know. Right. And that's, that's yeah. a good, I guess, though, she works in PR. That is something yeah. that she must enjoy, at least on some level, for her to do that as her work. So to her, that yeah. that is important to her. Hopefully right. it was important to her partner, too. But no, that's a <laughs> super great point. You're right. You're absolutely right. So, all right, let's – I don't want to argue with you anymore, Tony. We're not arguing. <laughs> Mom and dad are fighting. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, honestly, it's, that is a really great point. And I'm actually – I'm really glad that you said that for sure. So um, just for fun, do you have any – um, do you have any moments that you can look back on in the past 12 years? Well, this is a huge question to ask. <laughs> but do you have any um, – well, actually, let me switch that a little bit. Do you have okay. a favorite part of a day, like a favorite moment on a wedding day? Oh, like you mean something that happens every week that – I mean, generally... I know it's not always every, every week. But is there any part of the day that you just like really look forward to um... besides hitting your bed at the end of the night? <laughs> going to besides sleep? the glass of wine when yeah. you get home? Um Oh, uh, I, there is no part of the day that I dread. So that's, it's a hard, it's a hard question to answer because we genuinely enjoy what we do. And I think that part of the day changes depending on who we're shooting for. Um, you know, um, but I, I really like shooting portraits. That's part of the reason I have been doing a, more commercial work in the past few years. I really enjoy that. Um, as long as we have a little nice chunk of time, we we both, Amy and I both love shooting the beginning of the day, the getting ready part. It's like, I don't know, that's when we're allowed to be our most creative because that's when the expectations are usually, there's, there's usually not that many expectations for how that part of the day goes. And so we can kind of just go in and do our thing and, you know, yeah, I think that's so. That's awesome. I always feel yeah. like my um right before the ceremony starts like the last 10 minutes um Mm -hmm. i can't say i dread that part of the day but it is absolutely if i'm gonna have a stomach ache at any point in the day (laughs) it will be in those last 10 minutes before like things really kick off because there's just like i think i'm a person who's very sensitive to everybody's you know emotions around me i tend to absorb a lot of that which is my job that's part of what i do but i think i'm also absorbing everybody's nervous energy in that moment and it's for me that translates into a belly ache (laughs) Um, but my hands down, my favorite, well, I should say, should go back a little bit. As soon as the last person walks down the aisle, which in many cases is my bride, as soon as she walks down the aisle with whoever she's walking with, there is this instant like 20 pound weight that just comes (laughs) off my shoulders where I could just breathe a little bit easier because I know like they're on their way, you know, it's, it's in the officiant's hands at that point. And it's just this beautiful moment. And then it's like, it's 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 just like a fun roller coaster ride from okay. there. But my favorite part of the day, um, for most of my days, um, the wedding days I do, is that like split second moment right before the couple is introduced into their reception, where there's and maybe this is why because again I'm absorbing that energy that yeah. I have where there's just this excitement, right? Where 
you're like about to just like kick everything into high gear and you're going to eat. So like, that's really fun. Yeah. And all the things like the anticipation is there where the night hasn't started yet, but it's about to start and you're about to just walk into this room where everybody's cheering for you and you're just going to celebrate for the next few hours. Um, I love that point of the day because I just feel like it's this, oh, the anticipation is there. The excitement <laughs> is there. Um, it's just, I, I think it's it's one of my most favorite parts of the day. And I think it's so interesting that you're you're looking at it from the point of that morning where you're able to be creative and just kind of be in uh -huh. the space and you have time to just just capture all the things that going yeah. on. Uh, it's so interesting. I think it's cool. That, well, your favorite part of the day is by far the most terrifying part of the day for us. It's <laughs> not even, it's not, oh, it's not even close. Um, the, that next, from the time the introductions start, the next like 15 or 20 minutes are the hardest part of the day for us. Is that because like everybody's coming in and you have the first dance and toasts? Yeah. So there's, it's a lot of very challenging technical things moving very, very quickly. So true. introductions are as silly as that sounds are, are very hard because people are moving quickly. We've lost all control. <laughs> <laughs> there and, is the Virgo in you right there. Yeah, That's where that yeah. Virgo came out. Um, yeah. And, and the lighting situations change dramatically in a very short amount of time, which is, which is really hard. Um, cause it's usually dark by then or, you know, getting dark. And so, um, there's a lot of like technically challenging things right in a row. And then you, people usually jump into a, like a first dance or something right away, which is not only technically challenging and usually very different from the introductions that just happened 20 feet over there, but it's also important. So there's a lot of stuff. And if we don't have time to really think through the first dance, because a lot of things were going on just leading up to that, then it's even more stressful. So like that, that is the most like stress inducing chunk of the day for pretty much any photographer, I think. That's so interesting. Okay, so here's what I want ringers to take away from that right there is this is where when you hire professional photographers who know how to handle changing light and changing situations and doing all that, this is where that's what you're investing in. For those of you that are saying, well, you know what, maybe we can just have a friend do it or somebody who just has a camera but doesn't really have too much wedding day experience, that scenario right there is part of what you pay for when you hire a professional person because they are going to know how to work through that situation because they've worked through that situation before. And they're not standing there going, oh, crap, everything's suddenly moving very quick and I'm stressed out and I don't know what to do because I'm not a photographer. That's exactly what I would do in that situation. <laughs> I would absolutely pay panic and I would certainly do my best as any person would but those are often key moments of the day especially your first dance and like maybe your first dance happens and then your dad gives a toast or your maid of honor gives a toast or your best man gives a toast these are all moments of the day that are are important and part of the story of it all so uh this is why you invest in really good people <laughs> who know what they're doing who may be panicking but they know how to work <laughs> in, through it internally, <laughs> internally. Internally, that is funny. Yeah. I'm a I'm a control person as well. Uh, there are certain parts of the day where you do need to let go of the. You know, for for me professionally, I need to know that I have to just let go of the control, like trying to control Mother Nature. You know, when when she's bringing rain for an outdoor ceremony, and you're just like, <laughs> "Come on, lady, work with me yeah. here." Um, and other parts where I have to use that control as um as a good, not an evil. Um, but that's funny. We were talking for our Patreons. Um, Patreons know this. Uh, Tony and I are both Virgos. Uh, our birthdays are in September. And there are certain traits that Virgos have. And while we're different in some ways, that's what I was saying. Uh, that's where we know that Tony is, in fact, a Virgo. Because <laughs> Virgos do like to have that control on a situation, for sure. I wish I could show you a slideshow. There's one wedding in particular that I remember because like as they were doing their introductions, they were in a room with like blinking LED lights. I don't most people might not know this, but LED lights blink um, at a very fast rate. And so you can't see it with your eye, but the camera picks it up. And so like if you only shoot with those in certain rooms, like half your photos are just completely black. Half of them have like are half black and half lit and then the other half are fine. Well, that was three halves. Let's say thirds. Um, <laughs> we don't um, do so math they, on this episode. <clears throat> yeah. So they started in there. They walked through what I would describe as an extremely dark tunnel as they got introduced. And then they came in and the room 
had a huge window and the sun was setting and it was coming right through the window. So you had full sun, you had a dark tunnel, and then you had blinking LED lights all within about 20 feet. And those are three completely different situations. And like, it can be really cool if you do it right. And it can also be like a total disaster if you don't know what you're doing. It's, it's, right. <laughs> it's scary. And that's things. And, and I don't think any photographer really accepts, expects couples to know or understand no, no, no. light too much, right? Like you just yeah. focus on planning your day. But there are times where um, I know for us, it, and especially the conversation comes up when we're talking about where the couple's going to be getting ready. If they're getting ready in a really dark room with no windows or anything, first of all, hair and makeup isn't going to be super happy. Well, makeup especially because they want mm. that natural light. Photographers really want natural light to do their thing so it's times like that throughout the planning process that we have to kind of go like let's make sure that everything we're thinking about also works for all the other vendors involved because it is really challenging um and light's not something prior to being a wedding planner i never thought about light when it came to photography like yeah i don't know it's I can see just fine in here, but I, I didn't, you taught me something about the LEDs. I didn't even think about that. Um, I've definitely seen raw photos before where, like you said, half of it is light and half of it's dark. And I didn't know where yep. that came from. Mm-hmm. Those sneaky yeah. LEDs. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, venues, just change out your lighting. Okay. <clears throat> we've, right. had a few, we've had a few that changed all their lights to LEDs and we we've had to like, yeah, we, we've been like, hey, what's up with the lights? And they're like, yeah, everybody's mentioning that. <laughs> oh, see? Well, at least, as you know, it's not just you then at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, that, that, that's good, though, when you can kind of go back and have that relationship to be like, so you changed something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys, before we wrap up this episode, um, Tony, can you please tell our lovely ringers um, how they can connect with you and learn more? Like, what's what's the best way to stalk you in a safe, non-creepy, cool sort of way? Yeah, yeah. Um, our website's hofferphotography.com. That's H-O-F-F-E-R. Um, and our Instagram's the same, Hoffer Photography. Uh, so feel free to check out either of those. Um, I think that's it. Was there other yeah. things I'm supposed to say? No, I don't think so. Honestly, guys, I'm telling you, of all the Instagram accounts you should follow, and I'll put a link to these in the show notes so you can easily grab them. But um, yeah, at Hoffer Photography is definitely one you should put on your list because they're cool photos. They're always entertaining. They make me laugh just about every time. Um, it's just a lot of puns. There's a lot of puns. Yeah. You guys yeah. are the masters at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much for joining me. You've been incredible. Um, I always miss Dan uh, not having him while he's out on paternity leave, but it was really great to get another photographer on here to kind of talk about your uh, your viewpoint on it. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yahoo. <laughs>